Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Borg Warner. Feel good about driving. Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. And by Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. Welcome to AutoLine Daily, where we do our best to help you become some of the best informed people as to what's going on in the automotive industry. Boy, Ford is going gangbusters in China. The company's sales are up over 50% so far this year, and now it's even outselling Toyota. Of course, that's not too surprising, since Toyota sales have plunged due to consumer backlash against Japanese automakers. Even though Ford sales are exploding in China, last year its market share was only 2.5%, compared to over 15% for General Motors. But Ford is aiming to double its share by 2015 with the introduction of 15 new models in that time frame. Sales of electric vehicles are nowhere near where the experts confidently predicted they would be, and this is a global problem. Volkswagen now says EVs need a breakthrough to bring down costs in order to appeal to the mass market. French supplier Valeo agrees. The company predicts EVs will only be 2% of the market by 2020, Extended range EVs will be 1%, plug-ins about 4%, full hybrids 11%, and mile hybrids will make up 8% of the market by the end of the decade. But as I keep pointing out, that's not enough for automakers to recoup the investment that they've made in electric technology. And maybe this next item is the kind of breakthrough that EVs need. Protein Electric just announced the production version of its electric hub motors. The system, called Protein Drive, uses independently controlled in-wheel motors with an integrated inverter, control electronics, and software. Protein claims it improves handling and improves efficiency by removing external gearing, transmissions, drive shafts, axles, and differentials. The package fits any conventional 18 to 24 inch wheel, and that would seem to indicate it's aimed at the truck market. Production starts in 2014 at the company's new facility in China, and by the way, we'll have the CEO of Protein on After Hours in a, another two weeks. Right after we put yesterday's show to bed, where we reported that Fred Diaz was leaving the Ram brand to move to Nissan, Chrysler announced major changes to account for Fred's departure. Reed Biglin, who had been running the Dodge brand, moves over to Ram. Tim Kuniskis, who was running the Fiat brand in North America, takes over at Dodge. Jason Stoicevich was named to run Fiat. And Bruno Cattori was named president of Chrysler of Mexico, which was another position that Fred Diaz had before moving to Nissan. Speaking of management changes, Volkswagen just shuffled the deck at its troubled Seat division. It moved James Muir out of there and slotted in Jürgen Stockman as chairman of Seat. Stockman, who is 51 years old, spent most of his career at Ford. He joined VW in 2010 to head up sales at Skoda. Last year, he was put in charge of marketing for the VW Group and VW passenger cars. But you know, in the past, VW's chairman, Ferdinand Pieck, has warned that they would shut Seat down if it did not become profitable. Clearly, they're not ready to give up on it just yet, but Air Stockman is going to be under enormous pressure. Seat is based in Spain. Most of its sales are in Southern Europe. And the way things are going there now, he has a Herculean task on his hands. A quick programming note here. Autoline After Hours will go live at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time this Thursday. It's just a one-time change to accommodate my schedule but we want your questions for rapid fire. Our guest will be David Johnson from Acades Power. They have come up with a radically new engine design and you can find a lot more about that on the web. So get those questions in early. Say, check out this beautiful custom hot rod. It's called Checkered Past. It's a 1940 Ford Coupe that won this year's Riddler Award, the highest award that you can win for a custom car. The award is handed out at the Autorama Show in Detroit every year. We've got a lot more about that show coming up next. And I gotta tell you, it's a lot of fun to look at. Proven on the track. 
and on roads around the world. Borg Warner turbochargers improve fuel economy and reduce emissions without sacrificing performance. Borg Warner, official turbocharger supplier to the IZOD IndyCar Series. Most people who go to the Autorama look at the beautiful custom jobs like this 36 Ford Roadster from Chip Foose. But when you get into the basement, you'll find the rat rods, which are all about individual expression made from scrounged parts. Talk about hand-built cars. The craftsmanship is amazing. Check out this hand-hammered copper. What a great look. And check out the stitching on the brake booster as well as on the fenders. One exhibitor created this retro diorama complete with a black and white television playing an old Ronald Reagan movie. For whatever reason, skeletons were a big part of this year's rat rod displays. They were everywhere. They even included baby and mom out for a walk with the pet rat. Speaking of rats, they showed up everywhere too. You never know what will show up on the floor of the show. And you've got to just love the different graphics that show up on these cars. It's really folk art. Vintage World War II era motorcycles are part of the scene including this one with a sidecar. And of course, that leads us to all these different customized 1950s era bicycles, including this sculpted streamliner. At its heart, Autorama is all about fabrication. These people can make anything. As Bill Cosby once said, look at them pipes. Pastel colors, custom grills, including a gold tooth in the grill of that old Buick. And this wild rear engine rat rod is what makes the basement display at Autorama one of my personal favorites. You know, I love going to the Autorama, but last year there was a lot more participation by local artists in the rat rod category and a lot more dioramas built to display their cars. I don't know if the Autorama folks tried to reduce their participation, but I sure wish they'd do more to bring younger people into the car scene. Anyway, that wraps up today's report. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.